Billy here with Gilbert Travels. Here today at Seattle Tacoma Airport, taking a flight with Alaska Air on a 737. No time today for any lounges. In fact, I barely made it to the gate in time for boarding after encountering the busiest TSA pre-line I've ever seen. We quickly found our way to the back of this 737 for our seats for the next almost six hours across America. But we will talk about the seats more in the air. Suffice it to say, I wish I could have been in the first class seats I already reviewed on this plane with Alaska for a much shorter flight from LA to Seattle. But how is it to take one of the longest domestic routes in the US on a fairly basic narrow-body aircraft? Let's get in the air and find out. While we did miss sunrise, the sun was still low in the air as we broke through the clouds to these amazing views of Mount Rainier. Let's have a better look at today's seats. Row 27, D, E, and F. This is a fairly standard Recaro slimline seat that normally I'd be perfectly happy to find on a short two hour flight with a top mounted airline literature pocket, single piece adjustable tray table, and netted personal item pocket. I give a big thumbs up to the well mounted and clearly visible universal power port with USB plug and the fairly generous amount of knee and leg room provided by this seat's design with about 31 inches of pitch. I also appreciated the fully adjustable headrest. I was surprised not to find a coat hook on the seat. As expected, overhead you will find individual air and reading lamps. Not to be expected was that my window shade refused to deploy and judging from the condition, it had been that way for quite some time. I love a window view as much as any of you, but given that the sun was right outside my window for the entire flight, that made for a challenging experience. Wedging in an airline magazine helped a little, but things got a bit toasty and the glare was quite difficult to put up with for this almost six hour flight. Alaska is in the midst of upgrading their fleet wide seating. And I do hope that the new product is better suited for their many long transcontinental flights between the US coasts as this seat product pushed the limits for me on a 3000 mile journey. What does not need improving is Alaska's friendly crews, who brought out our pre-ordered breakfast meal boxes shortly after takeoff, which we purchased via the Alaska website before our flight. I really liked the detailed descriptions, nutrition info, and photos available to review online before ordering. Great job! Based on availability, meals are also available for sale on board, and the prices will be the same either way, but by pre-ordering, you guarantee your preferred meal is loaded. Additional snack boxes and individual options are available as well. As I mentioned, pre-orders came out first, so it was a plus if you were hungry to be served quickly. However, it did take some time for the accompanying drink cart to make it back to us in row 27. 
Today I had Alaska's signature Tillamook fruit and cheese plate. I had read online that Alaska frequent flyers even asked for this meal in first class, so I had high expectations. Truly here, I was not disappointed with the most fresh and generous economy fruit and cheese plate I have experienced in the air to date. Once the drink cart did make it back to us, I received two packages of Biscoff cookies to go with my complimentary ginger ale. Various alcohol selections are also available for purchase. In total, the cabin crew made three full drink cart services during this flight, and that is definitely to be commended. One result of those three drink services, however, and sitting in the aft area of the cabin, meant frequent long lines for the lavatories around our seats. As far as entertainment, Alaska relies on a streaming Wi-Fi based system to your own personal device. The airline also rents tablets on board for flights of this duration to coach passengers who don't have their own to use. I accessed the system both through my laptop and my cell phone, and I found it to have a good selection of free movies, a basic in-flight tracker, paid internet access, and free text messaging, which I think is another great plus for Alaska. Their new cabin will integrate tablet holders, similar to American Airlines Project Oasis, which will make viewing your device at a natural angle easier. Long flight for a 737. Pretty comfortable seat, a lot of space. Good meal. Sit back and relax here for a little while. After this flight, we had to get a taxi back to Miami International Airport, so I didn't have time to film closing thoughts on the ground. But in summary, while this is a perfectly respectable short-haul domestic economy product, with good legroom, nice power plugs, and a very good meal, this was quite a very long flight to be in the back of a 737. From just after dawn at takeoff to sunset as we got back over Florida over five and a half hours later. I can't say honestly that I'd be excited to fly this plane en route again as I took it today. But perhaps Alaska's new seat product will change that for the better. I do look forward to trying that out in the future for you. As we come in for a landing at Fort Lauderdale tonight, I thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next flight. Come back again soon for more flight reviews here at Gilbert Travels. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can be made aware when more content is available. Thanks for watching.